Okay, what I'm going to show you now uh, is something that we get asked quite a lot, and it's with reference to um, Euro and oval profile cylinders um, that operate a cam. Uh, now, what some people find is they may get a job where someone's got this type of lock, whether it be on a UPVC door or to perhaps operate some type of deadbolt. But what they're finding is that when they're locking off the door, so i.e., they shut the door, perhaps they pop the key into the lock. They can turn it and they can hear the actual bolt throw or whatever type of locking mechanism is being used actually lock off the door. Perhaps on a UPVC door they try the door handles and it's all locked off. But they find they can't get the key to turn enough so they can actually get the key out of the lock. It actually stops just before that. So it ends up to retain the key. And the only way to get the key back out is to actually unlock it. Okay. Now what that tends to be is a slip cam. Now on this type of lock, the true position of the cam, when the actual keyways are in their lock position, both sides, the cam should just be here, just off centre. So i.e. when you're looking straight onto the lock, the cam will protrude just on one side, be it whether it's left or right, there's no right or wrong. Okay. Now on a lock that has a slip cam, when you actually take the lock out the door, what you're going to find is, looking at the lock, with the keyway again in its lock position, both sides, what you'll notice now is that the cam is almost in an upright position. And again, it will be up, almost upright, but just off to one side. Okay? So you see here, the cam is in the wrong position. So what actually happens is, when someone tries to operate this, they'll pop the key into the lock, lock off perhaps the UPVC door, go to turn, so the can comes round, it wants to do a full 360 degrees, but then because of the wrong position of the cam, it's now being forced up against perhaps the back of the bolt tail. So, hence, you can't get the key out of the lock. So again, you have to come all the way back round, so it gives you that key back. Now you can realign the cams on these locks. One way to do it would be to actually remove one C-clip from whichever, uh, whichever side, so remove the C-clip, pop the key in to the side that you've removed the C-clip from and then just extract the plug a small amount until you feel that the cam frees itself up. Then you can try and realign the cam and get the plug back in to, to the lock so it locks in place so that cam is just offset like so. Now one downside to, do, uh, to doing that is firstly the C-clips can be a bit of a sod to actually get off and they tend to misshape, etc. Although there are uh, special C clip removal tools and tools to actually put the C clip back onto the lot you can buy. But if you haven't got them, it is quite uh, a fiddly little job. And also, worst case is you extract the plug a little bit too far and you lose some of these back pin, uh, pins here, so they'll jump up into the lock case. So then you're in a position where you've got to take out the whole plug and then repin right from scratch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you an easier way we can do that on this lock where the cam is offset. Okay, so both sides are in their lock position. Okay, first thing is to pop this lock into a vise, so i.e. you would take out the lock out the door. Okay, just pop that into a vise so you can see. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more so you get a better look at this. Okay, so we've got our lock there. And you see the cam's in the wrong position. So the first thing that you would do is get the key, or one of the keys for the lock, insert that into the keyway, don't keep it upright, give it a slight turn so that key can't come out. Next what we're going to do is pick the lock, you're just going to pick it the same way as you would if you're picking any pin, tum pin tumbler lock. So let's start to get this to go. Okay, even then again I'll get that little bit of give on the plug. I'm just being nice and light all the time on my tension tool. Just there. Okay, so the plug's turned. But what you'll see is now, that even when I turn the plug, it doesn't operate the cam. That's because obviously the key's in on this side. Because these locks are designed only to work from one side at a time with the key. Okay, so although I can turn the plug, it's not doing anything to the cam. 
But the way that I can get around this is literally using perhaps just a very thin bit of spring steel. Because the idea here is to go in to the lock from the side that I've picked and I can actually feel and locate the cam. Okay, so what I do, see there, goes in a little bit more. So now if I turn that plug, you see how that cam and the key from the other side move. Okay. So what I can do, I can bring this side round until that cam is in almost the position that I want it, which would be just there. Now this key is upside down, so I still can't get this key, this actual key out. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm now just going to turn again, just find that plug. Okay, sorry, just find that cam. Just wait until it just it's going to lock in in a minute. Okay, you can see that beginning to turn that key. So now what I'm going to do is bring that round, and this is almost going to reset. So I'm bringing it back round. I'm going to feel for that cam again. Just there. Continue to bring that round. Okay, now that key wants to come out. Okay, and that means that now that's engaged with this lock or the keyway upside down is now engaged the cam. So I can remove this key. Now if I continue to turn this keyway, you see how at the moment it's not catching the cam. Okay, and that's because the little bar in here needs to move across to the other side so that this plug now engages the little butterfly wheel in here. So all I do is just insert my steel just in the center of the keyway, fill for that bar, and I just push that in. Because now when I turn the plug, it turns the cam. So now I can bring the keyway back to its true position. The cam resets, locked off, and now I have the lock, just so you can see this, so I can make sure that you're seeing it. Now I have the lock in its correct position, keyway locked, cam in the right position from both sides. So now we have a lock that works the way it should do. And just so you know what can cause this, the main things that cause a cam to slip, most of the time on locks, will be if anyone's actually forced a key in from one side where there's already a key on the other side. Because these locks are only designed to work one way at a time. But sometimes you find that someone may force a key in from the other side. And on some particular locks, there's enough play there to actually force that key in and to turn. And because the keys are in different positions, you end up with the cam in the slip position. But also it could be where just excess force has been applied, where someone's not used to the lock, they're trying to turn it in the wrong way, and it's caused the cam to actually slip. Worst case is they could actually break something on the lock, but you're more than likely going to know that when you take the lock out of whatever type of locking mechanism that it's being used on. But a basic slip cam like we had on here can be rectified nice and quickly in the way that I showed you there. Okay.